<laughs> hey, there's a great book you should read, DL, called uh, My Grandma's Hands. Uh, racial, it's called My Grandma's Hands, Racialized Trauma and the Pathways to Mending Our Hearts and Bodies, man. They talk about that at length, about, sure how, about how white people just feel like we're just impervious to pain. Text that to me. Like, even the very J. Marion Sims, who had, who had up until recently, a statue in, uh, you know, in, in the park, and it's the father of modern gynecology, he performed um, surgery without anesthesia on enslaved black women, like almost, mm -hmm. almost everything that's associated with us, almost everything. Like even if you look at Juneteenth, more white people will be off on a day that commemorates the end of slavery, I'll be two, two and a half years later, we'll be off. The, and I think to make it fair, if we're gonna have a Juneteenth, white people should have to work all day for free that day. They all <laughs> 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 for us. Yeah, right. yeah. When do I get a break? You'll find out. And you're <laughs> it's just, it, it, there are things that America will accept and there are things that they won't. Like we've made incredible leaps. We will accept a man that is, a man is really a woman trapped in, 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 a, in a woman's body or a woman's really a man trapped in a man's body. But we haven't grasped the concept that all black people aren't inherently inferior or inherently criminal. Like every time a black person gets shot, it's like, what about Chicago? I live in San Jose. What the hell it got to do with me? Like, so right. I think that there, even when I watch you do an interview with Pete Buttigieg and he was talking about how far America's come. Who, and, who the judge, man? What did you call him? Just like, <laughs> man, I, I, I said, he said it, he said it how it looks. He said it how it looks. I don't know. I think he's a bright young kid, but I think like everybody else, he can't wrap his mind around the fact that America, either black people are infantile, uh, amoral people, or America has been incredibly racist and monstrous. Either mm -hmm. they can't, when, when, you, when you look at the fact, like they always look how far we've come. Yes, but every one of our freedoms is attached to white people's notion of it. Every one of our freedoms has a moratorium on it. And every, like even the right to vote depends on which set of white men are in power at the time mm -hmm. when it gets, uh, when it comes up for reelection or when it mm -hmm. comes to a vote. Well, our freedoms are not in charge. We shouldn't have to negotiate hu basic human freedom, but we're as free as the white people in charge that day let us be. That's right. <laughs> freedom, we don't have to negotiate freedom. I don't have to have a panel see. Uh, to, and one of the things people say, well, it makes white people feel bad, this critical race theory. Yeah, but, yeah learning about racism is bad, but change was a lot worse. That's right. That's <laughs> like, right. I don't, so I don't, I don't understand. And there is this notion that you, you, whatever has happened to you has to have been your fault or my forefathers were just monsters. Like we have monsters on the, on the $20 bill. It's the, the, the fact that we got a rapist and a murder on our money that we have to work hard mm. for is ironic to me. I, I, I hate the fact that they point to the creed of this country and say, yeah, th this is what this country is all about. If this right. country was really about freedom, just freedom, liberty, and justice for all, we wouldn't have to fight for our rights. Who has to fight for the even black people are the only force of the, the only being, the only being in existence that has to other ask other beings for his right to exist. Mm. It, it's right to just live. No one's telling you we want to be in charge. We're saying we have the basic right that our lives matter is a, is a political statement that starts right. fights. That's like, right. I never thought I'd see America so scared of a disease they let us walk around with masks on. I just, I just didn't think. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just getting around this notion and, 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 and helping, having black people understand this notion. Like I hear, um, you know, and you hear this all the time, black on black crime, but black, black children who have black teachers throughout the course of their educational uh, uh, journey are more likely to go on to school. Black women and black people who have black uh, medical uh, doctors and, and healthcare professionals are more likely to have a successful outcome. We can't be bad for each other if we teach each other how to learn and we lead each other to life. We can't be bad right. for each other. Mm -hmm. we, just, just having black people around you makes you safer and opens your mind up. How can we be bad to each other? And why do we sell the notion that we are? Man, yo, it's the illest mind fuck DL. These th th these colonizers who who killed, raped, pillaged all around the world, most violent people you've ever seen, right. convinced right. the world that we the violent ones, and, and we convinced can... each other that we the violent ones. We... And you know, like when everybody always go, oh, we like crabs in a bucket. Well, you idiot, crabs don't belong in a bucket. If you put anything anywhere, <laughs> belong, it would fight to survive. People are idiots. It's crazy to me. And then, and yeah, then... you talk. <laughs> 
I was going to say back to your black on black crime, because yes, people always bring that up. And I can't stand when people do that, when it has nothing to do with the uh, matter at hand, when you're talking about police brutality against black people. And they're like, well, black people need to stop killing each other. And you're right. And you say it in the book too, black on black doctoring. Let's talk about that. Black on black entrepreneurship and how we help, we can help each other out so much. And that representation really does matter because how do you know what you can be or do? And how can somebody help you better than uh, somebody that looks like you, right? When people, we learn by seeing things, like like some people and hearing things. We're audio didactic to a large degree. Whatever we are right now is what we see. Like like people start playing bad. Black people start playing basketball because they saw black people doing. It. We started look, look at what happened when black people watched the Cosby's. How many people went to college? Look at what happened now when Barack Obama ran for president, and look how many people became involved in the political process. Um, 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 and you, it, there's a direct correlation between Cosby, watching Cosby, not not all the stuff that happened after. And <laughs> you didn't want to watch it. You didn't watch it. <laughs> and America's acceptance of a black father or a black leader position. You, there, there. So we 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 do what we see. And if you took all of the resources out of anywhere. It, the, a rose and a, and a weed fight for the same resources as black people do in these kids. Like, crime isn't, isn't based on, on race. It's based on poverty. Show me a safe, poor place. But nobody, everybody, Chicago is the whipping boy for all that's wrong in the black community. Nobody ever talks about West Virginia and that's how right. thousands more pills peel, than, than, than people. Nobody ever makes a connection. Nobody, everybody talks about black on black crime as if we are all inherently the same. Nobody talks about white racism the same way. Nobody does that. That's right. So I just, I, I just, I think it's, it, it, we have to start having different conversations with people. And, and, and the only way I can do it is either through a joke or a book. Why, why can't politicians just say America is a racist country? Whether it's Secretary Pete, whether it's, you know, OG Jim Clyburn, VP Harris, Tim Scott. Why, why can't politicians just say America's a racist country? Anybody that gets money from somebody that they got to make feel good, whether it's a dope dealer, a preacher, or a politician, all have the same interests. Whether it's a dope dealer, a preacher, they got to make you feel good or you won't, you won't, they can't live. Mm. If they don't make you feel good, if you're not coming back, if they're not, if you're not, America's fat and ignorant because we, eat, we, we, we like too much sweet in our food and in our conversation. We have to feel good. We're a nation full of inter- infantile children. I know that if I want to be a healthy human being, I can't only consume what I like. I can't eat dessert all the time. That's but right. We only hear the things we want to hear and whatever we don't want to hear, we won't. Like we, 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 we go in these echo chambers. Like we, we, we live around people that are like us. We talk to people that are like us. Even the algorithms on our social media are people that are more inclined to be like us. So, and so we live in these worlds where only, and never, and ne- you, you never see anybody from Fox News go anywhere else because they only play home games. Like wow. how great champion could you be if you only played in front of your home crowd? You can't yeah. win. The greatest teams are the teams that can win anywhere. But you're so afraid of having your notion challenged that you will only play for the team that, that you shoot up for every day. That's real. What, what does surviving in America look like to you, DL? Because the book is called How to Survive in America. What does that look like for you? Right now, it's lucky. Right now, you just got to be lucky. <laughs> it really is. And it, it, it's sad. Wow. It, it, I don't, I, there, there was nothing Trayvon Martin could have done. There was nothing Tamir Rice could have done. There was nothing um, that, 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 that and, until we change this notion that our lives literally matter until we change this notion that our deaths, like even if even even having asthma and and the, how can you tell us to eat better and everything's seventeen miles away, or it's so expensive? How can you tell us uh, to learn when our schools got lead in them and, and and people who don't care about them and, and they're underfunded? How can you tell us to be viable members of, of society when you when you inherently tell us we're not? So our survival right now is predicated right now, like. We as parents teach our children, are so afraid of our children and teach them to be so respectful that like that'll save them and it won't. And it's, it should be a, to a society shame that they would care, that they are more interested in having compliance in society, a compliance society than a well-regulated uh, uh, professional police department. And so all of our survival mechanisms, I was lucky when I got sick uh, in, in Nashville, they were gonna take me to one hospital, find a hole was, took me to another. I was lucky. I was lucky to have the resources to not have to stay in Nashville and beyond. I was lucky. So uh, obviously that was hard work, but anybody, black people are the only people, some of the only people who 
are judged by the exception and not the rule. Well, Michael Jordan did it. Everybody can't be Michael Jordan. Nope. <laughs> where, where they always go point to the one dude who made it out. How come you can't be like him? Because most of us are not exceptional inherently, but we are based on exceptions. So our experience, our existence here, basically to date is based on luck. And, and to change that, they have to be real, uh, real systemic changes. There just has to be.